more approachable to their children. I think a lot of adolescents don't think that their parents can understand them, especially since technology has evolved so greatly between the time that we were adolescents and the time mm -hmm. that these children are now growing up with all, all these new, um, new innovations and technology. So I think there's a, a sense that, that parents just don't understand. Um, they think that parents they don't think understand. That, exactly. Rather exactly. that, because a lot of parents do understand, and um, but you know, do they feel that their parents aren't available to them? You know, with, with all this new technology, that are and, and and also, you know, years ago, you know, um, my mother went back to work after I went. Uh, I started high school, and so and years ago they two parents didn't work. It was only yeah. one parent that worked. Mm -hmm. So the parent was available all the time. Mm -hmm. And now that families, most parents, both mother and father have to work, and then they come home late, are they not, they, they, you know, and, and also all the kids now are in all kinds of special, you know, their baseball. I mean, I, I think I mentioned to you the only way I can see my two grandsons if I go to their practice <laughs> right, or their or games. Other, you know, I have to make, a, <clears throat> they're so scheduled. You think that this is, um, you know, is this part of what's going on today? The technology, you mentioned technology earlier. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I, th I think, um, I think that adolescents have always felt like their parents don't understand. Um, I think that's always been the case. I do think that the busier lives get, the more, the less time and the less space there is for kids to approach their parents. And I don't think it's necessarily anything that parents are are doing consciously. I just think that with such busy lives, oftentimes there just isn't the space for it. Mm. That's too bad, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, we would hope that our kids could talk to us. What are some of the trends uh, that are new that you know that you're seeing, and what concerns do you have with some of these trends that are going on today? Mm -hmm. well, I think um, two of the top issues uh, that get presented for us in counseling are clearly have been the same for the last five to seven years, and that's anxiety and depression. And I think the in increase in anxiety that we're seeing is, is absolutely connected to the pace of our lives nowadays. Um, to definitely the pressure on adolescents and young adults to succeed, to go to school, to have a job, to be involved in all of these activities mm -hmm. that you mentioned, right. Suzanne. Um, so anxiety and depression, for sure. Um, uh, suicide is a huge issue that we are you know, managing all of the time. And, um, certainly when you have mental health issues, that's something that all counselors are going to pay attention to. Um, some of the other trends, uh, people are a lot more comfortable, youth are a lot more comfortable in their own skin these days. Mm -hmm. So the LGBTQ population, we're working quite a bit with um, kids who identify in that, with that population. Um, and also just this whole, I think, a newer trend of um, presenting as gender neutral, gender creative, gender fluid, and those are all terms that are relatively new, I'd say in the last couple of years, right, yeah. Marnie? Um, yeah. And so they're very yeah. much experimenting with, um, outside of kind of a binary identity of either male or female, and that's fascinating. It's interesting, mm -hmm. but you know, and when, they, when, when a child comes about suicide, I think uh, possibly some of the kids are getting into a lot of drugs these days, you know, drugs are getting passed, and some of the drugs are, you know, even, prescription drugs say that if you know if you take this drug you could experience depression or anxiety some drugs that are for anxiety and depression can cause anxiety and depression <laughs> yeah. and a lot of them are a lot of the kids are you know are getting into their parents um, at the parents medicine cabinets maybe their grandparents medicine cabinets and they're self-medicating maybe causing some of these things to happen yeah it's, it's sometimes it's hard to sort of figure out what came first, the chicken or the, or the egg. I, I do think that um, self-medicating happens quite often, especially in adolescence. Um, and I think that the underlying reason why they're feeling like they have to self-medicate is due to depression and anxiety. And, and then, stress. And stress, absolutely. And then I think you're right. I think that it, it becomes sort of this vicious cycle. 
and they can't get out and of it. Can. There's so much pressure. I mean, we, we talked about a little earlier, you know, they have to make the baseball team when they get into school. They got to make the, you know, the basketball team or the, or the football team for the guys. The girls are trying to make, maybe they want to go into athletics or they want to make the pom-poms or cheerleading and they don't make it and are, you know, just taking exams. There's one exam after another exam, so much pressure is put on these kids these days. I mean, we were kids, we, we just had a good time. After school, we just <laughs> played, went out and played. And nowadays, there's so much pressure. What are, so this is something that you deal with in your, in your response, right? Mm -hmm. All the pressures that they have nowadays, which um, it's a lot. It's a it lot, a lot more than we had when we were kids. It is. So it's a very different world out there today. I mean, I think we were talking um, earlier just how back in the day, people used to get married at 19 or 20, mm -hmm. and that is no longer the case, right? Um, there's more of a push for further education, uh, real pressure to go on to college, to earn a bachelor's, to earn a master's degree so that you can be, you can sustain yourself and support yourself. Um, and so relationships are, serious relationships, I think, are waiting longer and longer to, um, you know, to develop. Um, yeah, because your group, uh, you said you, you work with children 12 to 24, and I'm thinking, 24 mm -hmm. children? I was married. <laughs> yeah. I was married right. by, you know, <clears throat> you know, before I was 21. Everybody right. was married in those days, 19, right. 20, 21. Right. You know, everybody, you know, and we're yeah. talking about 24, 20, I'm thinking about 24 old, 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 old kid. We were <laughs> like, we were adults, we're adults. and we, we, we right. were having children already. Yes, exactly. And, what what's going? What's stopping <laughs> what's this? Happening? Twenty-four years old, and there's still a child. What do right. you what do you see on yeah, that? I, th I think there's a couple factors here. Um, first is really understanding brain development, and really understanding mm -hmm. that the frontal lobe is not fully formed until really around age twenty-five or so, um, and the effects of that is are really just um, the inability for an understanding of long-term consequences. And so if, if you have a young adult who really can't understand long-term consequences, that they really do need the support of their parents still. Um, and the other factor, I think Robin was right in saying that we are, our education um, has expanded. It's much more important to sustain yourself and be a functioning adult to go to college. And so we're, we're sort of more dependent on our parents at least through college, which is then 22, 23. Um, so I think those factors have really pushed the age of adolescence um, and expanded it. And, and people are, like you said, they're going for masters, they're going for doctorates. Uh, a, you know, bachelor nowadays is like having a high school yes. degree, and then they come out and there's no work except maybe working in a restaurant, you know, as a waiter. Our waitress, which is fine, they want to be servers, but 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 they have no jobs right. that come out, and then they have, there's so much in debt, you know, with all the school loans that they have to take, especially mm -hmm. in uh, degrees, you know, for masters and doctorate degrees, it's like, you know, continuous paying, paying yeah. and paying and Absolutely. paying. So, what are some of the things that uh, you know that I that programs that are offered in response. I, you mentioned something which is for the LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ, which is a difference now. The Q is, it, it was an old term. I think it's, it's queer. Right, and they right. want, remember that was a derogatory yeah, term. Absolutely. Right. Why is it, you know, why are we so using that term again? Right. It's interesting that the um, younger population has really reclaimed the word uh, queer um, to be a positive uh, um, empowering. Yes, an empowering term. Um, now, you will still see seniors who will say that that is a derogatory term, but the younger generation has absolutely reclaimed their power in that, in that, um, in that letter, Q. Mm -hmm. And so now we talk about LGBTQ and lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning, um, and allies. There's just a lot, um, there's a lot of letters that can go after that now. I know my, my our next show that I'm doing is going to be all about that topic. Oh, yeah. A young man that's coming in and talking about that, and so you have for uh, this uh, particular population. Do you work with them as far as 
what what is for the what what do they have in that program in response? Um, so for the Center for Sexual Health, we are just in a completely all inclusive. Um, program where anybody regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity can receive safe um, and informative sexual health care. We do have a couple of groups that are running um, that support the LGBT community as well. Um, we have, uh, we actually just started a transgender group called Gender Knots, mm -hmm. um, where uh, individuals can receive support who identify as gender nonconforming. Um, as well as an alliance group over the summer. And we actually even have a support group for parents of LGBTQ youth. And I see you have Cut the Drama, which is uh, about bullying and prevention. We had last month on our show, we had on children and bullying. Mm -hmm. And now this is the teen bullying. And But teen bullying is more cyber, is that correct? I think it's definitely moved from the hallways and playgrounds, um, you know, back in the day to absolutely being um, uh, on the internet and cyberbullying. So, and we were talking earlier about how that the communication in terms of social media is happening so quickly, and the cell phones and the texting and Instagram and Snapchat and all of that. Things are moving at the speed of light, and you know, you don't if you're not in conversation with someone, you don't get to experience facial expressions or any of the emotion. And so you may not know, um, you may not be building empathy to know that you might have hurt someone's feelings um, or totally disregarded them or insulted them or actually right. bullied them and harassed them. Right, they don't realize mm -hmm. it. We have a, just a couple of minutes left. Is there anything that you would like to address before we... Uh, we, because this is, there's so much here. We have another so show. <laughs> I mean, we have on bullying and we have Mirror Mirror, that's on body image. Mm -hmm. We have something on body image as well. Yeah. And you could tell us a little bit about Sure, absolutely. You know, I think it's very stressful with the way that media portrays um, beauty in our culture that it's really important that we educate our youth on and talk with them about um, beauty standards and um, the unrealistic beauty standards that the media sets up for for the adolescents, magazines, for the too. magazines, exactly for the girl. airbrushing, um, and just how unrealistic it is. But also listening to uh, to the to youth about how they are affected by this and ways in which we can help them. Yeah, in our show, we don't have those. A lot of uh, major television shows they have where you don't see, if you notice, everybody doesn't have a line in their face. But uh, we have our lines, so we show that we, you know, we've been here a long time. And we've, you know, we've worked and we've lived our lives hard and good. And so our every line is there. So we're very, we proud, proud. We're very proud of our Absolutely. lines on this television show. We don't have one of those uh, filters. So uh, yeah, because that's what they see. They see that on television. Everybody looks beautiful. Yeah. Nobody has a line in their face. Everybody has a perfect figure. And we're not all built like that. Right. Yeah. And I, I, that's good that you have a program that addresses that. You have a program for, you have a program for bullying, a, a program for mirror, mirror, body, image you have uh, there's so many different programs that response has that I'm you know puberty education a dating dating violence and prevention mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, when I was a kid, we used to take our mad money, you know, in case, you know, that was called mad money. I don't right, know if you remember right. that. And if you had a problem, you could take a cab home. Right. I had to do that once, by the way. <laughs> but I want to thank you, ladies. I see our credits are going down. I want to thank both of you for coming on our program. And I hope you come back and we'll talk, we'll get into more of the programs. And thank you very much. Thank you.